beautiful sound. Okay, so here we are in the aviary. And I know you guys are anxiously awaiting to see what Mary Cross new edition is. Okay, so as you can see, I'm driving. But where am I going? I'm doing something that every one of you women viewers that are age 40 and above should be doing every year. And that is going to have a mammogram. Y'all, I cannot stress enough how important it is for we as women to have this done on a yearly basis. I lost my grandmother to breast cancer when I was about Mary Carl's age. I was about 13. I may have been 12. May have been it was somewhere in that area. And she was a very, very important part of my life. And um, back then, I just, just don't think there were the treatments available for breast cancer that it is now. And I just feel that each and every one of us as women should do our responsibility for our families, for ourselves, and have that yearly mammogram done because treatments have improved so much. While Mary Carl and I, she's doing the filming right now, while we're taking this trip up to Birmingham, we're going to take a little detour. We're going to pick up something that she has been wanting for a very long time. And if y'all come along with us, you'll find out what it is shortly. Okay, so here we are in the aviary. And I know you guys are anxiously awaiting to see what Mary Cross new edition is. We got home a little bit too late last night. It was dark outside when we released them, which was good for them because they were able to, to, for her to set them on a perch where they stayed all night. We were watching them on the camera and the next day they felt like it was their home. So um, we're gonna show the birds and let Mary Carl tell you a little bit about them. Okay, so here they are. Can anybody take a guess as to what these are? I'll give you a hint. If you are from Emu land, you may know what these are. And the reason I said that is because they are native to Australia. Mary Carl, what do you have here? These are a species of Columbidae pigeons and doves, and they are called Australian crested pigeons. Some Aus people call them Australian crested doves. It doesn't really matter. They're the same thing. But they are about the size of a ringneck dove, and they're native to Australia. We have what we hope is a pair, but we will get them DNA sex to be sure. Yeah, we're actually going to come back out tonight and catch the, the two and show you guys how we take a sample for DNA sexing to determine whether you have a male or a female. And while she hopes it's a pair, they're gonna stay here no matter what. Right, Mary Carl? Right. And if it were to be a, and if it were to be two males or two females, we'll figure that out later. Yes, and, and it's not that they can't bond together, they just can't reproduce. Right, and Male, two male pigeons or two male female pigeons, they will pair up and take care of other pigeons' babies. So, it's it's a win-win, but you just want to have new chicks. Yep, that's right. So, while um, we're hoping for a pair, and the breeder that we got these from had no more of an idea if these were male and female than Mary Carl did, but... Mary Carl did a little research, and what was your 
information as to how to tell. I read a lot of things. One of the things was the eye ring would be bigger on males. Um, males are a little bit larger than females, which typically is opposite in most birds, but pigeons are an exception to that. Um, the males have a taller crest. So I just kind of went off of those and I picked the ones that fit that most. Okay, so do you remember how old he said that these birds possibly are? They are mature because one of them's been laying. One of them's been laying. And so you think that you got the female of the two that is laying. I think so. So we either have two females or a pair. Right. More than likely. More than likely. More than likely. Well, I think they're just beautiful. Um, and they are. They're they're really cute birds. And what what interests you about this what is it, a breed? Species. This what interests you about this species of bird to have as an addition to the aviary? I like most Colomidae species. For example, Colomidae's are all pigeons and doves. Um but I think they look cool because they look kinda like a cockatiel mixed with a pigeon. <laughs> You think that has something to do with it being Australian native and cockatiels being Australian native? I don't know. The crust might have something to do with that, but they are cute little birds. Well, we can hardly see them. Do you think we can walk over closer to them? We can try. So, while they're on the ground right now, these are not typically ground-dwelling birds, right? They're kind of like both. So, they're half ground-dwelling and half tree birds. Well, you saw earlier that that one flew into the tree that we have in here and we're actually gonna go and collect some branches that we think that we can add in between these poles to allow for more natural type perches right and since these are not a domesticated species breed um domesticated birds typically like flat perches and that goes for chickens and domesticated pigeons while wild birds they obviously sit on branches so that's best for their feet and you want to make this aviary as natural as possible right without adding any pressure treated lumber or anything that could be harmful right uh right now with the amount of birds that's in here there's plenty of perches but variety <laughs> scott wants to talk for a minute variety of perches may appeal to different different species of birds and the more we put in here the more options they'll have and we right. may we may find that the doves want to sit on the bench that's over there our ring neck doves whereas the um, australian crested may prefer a little twig and the ring neck doves have their own tree they love that tree they love the tree. And the Victorians always sleep on this big tree right here. Yes. So. The Victorians, they sleep elevated. Yep. But, but most of most of the day, they spend on the ground. They're either on the ground in the nest or sitting on their tree. <laughs> and the ringneck doves that we added, they're most of the time up high or in yep. flight. So, and that's going to be the, the case with these. While they <laughs> somebody thought that was funny. While they're going to spend about 50% of their time on the ground and 50% the doves. Listen, it's beautiful. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to be um, a good addition in here because it's not going to, it's not going to mess with the Victorians at all. Right. And these are the size of your average pigeon or dove. You'll, well, these are the size of the average Eurasian collared dove you'll see in the u.s and well to me you know it's kind of like I, I imagine most of you have seen a cockatiel which is a small australian bird that mary carl has uh zerk to me these are like a beefy cockatiel size they kind of are they they're like almost parrot shaped but they are about the size of a eurasian collared dove that you'll see in europe and the u.s um or like the domesticated ring necks. Um, Look at him scooting along. He's so <laughs> cute. They are cute. So these are not going to pose any kind of harm to the Victorians because they are so little and the Victorians really get along with other species well. So, And we have found since adding the ring necks that I, we actually, I mean, we don't know this for a fact, but 
from seeing their mannerism around the ring necks, they've enjoyed having other birds in here with them. You're right. So, I mean, we have talked to... Somebody got angry there. We have talked to various uh, bird specialists, so to speak, and they have all agreed that addition to the Victorians in this aviary, these birds will do well. They're really beautiful. And tonight, when we when we um, when we do the DNA sexing, we'll be able to show you more close up the color of their eyes, which is a really bright orange. It's really kind of it's kind of scary, but it's beautiful in the same sentence. And we'll be showing you more of these as time goes on. But for now, we're going to go gather, gather some sticks that we think we can mount in here. I'm going to grab a tape measure to see what what size I'm after and um, go from there. Bandit, do you think that this tree that we found right here will work in the aviary? Bandit, do you think it's gonna work? I think that's a yes. All right, so I've got this little battery powered saw. And it's easier for me to use this than it is a chainsaw. So I'm gonna see if it won't go through the tree. It's, it's happened too down here. What not easy. All right, so one down. And I, do you want to go on down the trail and see if there's more? Yeah, that's okay. What we'll so do. we'll set this one out by the road. Right. right. So our second thing that we're going to use is this vine. That vine was actually tougher than the tree. Really? Yeah. That one's little. Which one? Yeah. And this is where Greg made us the trail that goes down to the creek. So that's why these trees are already down. Look, man, Carl, here's a big pile. Yeah. But they may be too far gone. We want something that's not rotten. Right. It even sounds beautiful down here. You can see it's kind of like a, well, it is a little waterfall. And there's some deeper water right here, which is where Jason was going to try to use the ram pump to pump water into the pond. But we've since found out that it's too much of a rise to get it there. So we're going to have to come up with a solution That'll get the water up that far of a hill. You can see a little minnow swimming over there, Mary Carl. Yeah, I saw that. Bandit, you're not necessarily the one that likes water. Oh my. I may have told a story. It's usually Rocky that wants to get in all the water, but Rocky didn't come with us. He stayed at home. You think it's um not too far gone? Mm -hmm. Hey, Mary Carl, it's a vine. Yeah. Those seem, seem to to be better because they're more flexible. Right. All right, so we got to cut it for sure. Yeah. Which end do you want, the fat end or the skinny end? The fat one. The fat one. So we need to measure it and cut it off. Try to pull this other half? Yeah, let's see if we can't pull that down and get a thinner piece. Okay. He's 
Oh, my gracious. Come here. Bandit. it. So much for letting you come. You made my day a lot harder. You're going to have to have a bath. <laughs> come here. Come here. No, oh, ma'am. I only like mud. What are you going to tell Rocky happened? Nothing. Right, Nothing let's happened. Go. Let's go. Oh, so I'll come. Under the mud. Alright, we're loaded up. Got a little overhang here. Okay, so I've got two drills and I've got one of the sticks in here and I just kind of want to see how it's going to go before I bring them all in here. The first thing I'm going to do is drill a hole out. So that way it'll make my screw easier to go in. And then Mary Carl's going to show me where she wants it. So show me where you want the first one. How high? Well, we can go as high or as low as you want to. Okay, come to you some so I can match the hole up on this end. Keep coming. Right there. Is that okay? You okay? Come on. We've got some new sticks that have been added to the aviary for lots of additional purchase. And the Victorians may even use the, the larger ones. They're not going to try to use anything that's not going to support them. But I think this is beautiful. So Mary Carl will come in and sit down and throw some of the new feed. And the Victorians love to go and try to find it. Yesterday she brought them some cooked peas and carrots. And she, she gave them some of the peas and they absolutely loved it. They didn't really like the carrots, they just liked the peas. And maybe it's the shape of it. Who knows? Because they tend to like the round feed out of the new feed that we're starting to use. But hey, this is good. They like it. No apple juice needed. All right, y'all. I'm I'm totally satisfied with how this turned out. The, um, oh, well, the doves have already started to using it, as I showed you earlier. I don't know if y'all can see that one or not, but she's sitting up there on the perch. Now, it's gotten hot, so I'm going to go inside as well as me and Carl, and we're going to freeze dry something. So y'all come with me. All right, so now that you guys know what the mystery bird was that we picked up on our trip to Birmingham, I'm going to freeze dry something. And I've read a lot of you guys that have asked if you can freeze dry honey. The answer is no. And why? The reason you can't freeze dry honey is because you can't freeze honey. The next best thing to honey with a lot of additional ingredients is the candy that's known as bit o honey. Now, I don't, I'm not a candy fan, but I do like these. And Jason likes them too, but he didn't like the fact that they get stuck in his teeth. So I'm thinking that if we freeze dry these little bits of honey, they're going to come out with a different texture that doesn't stick in your teeth like it does when it's in its original state, which is like this. I also think that they're going to swell up. And this is about a bite-sized piece. To me, it is. So I'm thinking I'm going to cut these in half and line them on the freeze dryer trays and pre-freeze them. And the reason I'm going to pre-freeze them is I'm trying to speed up the process. My hope is that tonight when Mary Carl and I go to DNA 
sex test by feather to send it off to determine if we do have a pair that this product will be ready and I can show you the final. So I hope this is not gonna be too hard, but I've got a pair of kitchen shears here. Oh, it's easy. And I'm just gonna simply cut them in half and line the tray. And you can see I've got a couple of bags already unwrapped. That was, that was a, that was the biggest part of the work. line on the trays and now we're just going to take them and pop them pop them into the freezer hmm i think it's frozen <laughs> it looks frozen i think it is it's cold Load in the Harbor Stripe freeze dryer. With candy. I bet I couldn't chew one of these now. No. That's okay. This is the first time us doing candy. It is. I'm excited. Well, peeps. Oh, that's right. I forgot about the peeps. All right. So, that's more start. Hands. Start. Pre frozen. Pre frozen. Cooling to 32 degrees. The product's already frozen, so it's gonna speed this up. Yep. And hopefully by the time tonight falls, when we're ready to do our DNA feather sexing on the Australian crested doves, these will be ready and we can have us a snack while we're on our way outside. Oh yeah. Okay. All right, y'all, it's just about dark. Mary Carl's about to try to grab the first one. All right, so Mary Carl has one caught here and they release feathers. So she's doing the best that she can. Which one will this be? All right. Blue 65 or red 35? It's gonna be blue 65. Okay, and she's also gonna band this one while she has it in the net so that we know- Which birds which. Which birds which. All right, so here we are, we've got the band on. That's the one you think is a him? No idea. <laughs> I can't tell at night. So here is our second bird. And what I'm going to do is you don't want to touch the end of the feather. You just want to get the tip of the feather. And what you're looking for is the uh, quill. I'm just going to do a couple more. And y'all can see how orange the eye is or red. Um, these birds kind of remind me of a cardinal. And these are for pigeons, for a larger pigeon. But they work perfect for that, They'll right? be fine. All right, so you want to let that one loose? Yep. And... All right, so what usually happens is we send this off and it takes about five days for the results to come back. It does have... <coughs> Scott wanted to tell y'all about that. It does have to go to Florida to, uh, what is it called? Avian Genetics. Avian Genetics. Avian Genetics, and it's very simple. You can go to their website and just fill out a form, send the feathers in, or they do eggshells, but that's a whole nother. And they do blood samples as well. They do blood samples, but that's a whole nother ball game. So for tonight, we have our feathers bagged and we'll let you guys know as soon as we find out the six of these birds. All right, they're ready. So we're gonna mash defrost. Don't they look different? They look totally different. Now let's take them inside and see okay. what they taste like. Look at that. that is, that's unreal. He likes it too, doesn't he? <laughs> he does. <laughs> Did we leave? Didn't we leave one out? Do you know where it is? I ate it. Did you? <laughs> you ate the 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 little one we had. I, I was going to show the difference in sizes. Look at well, that. I can show you my teeth and show you that it's not all stuck in there like it is with the other one. This could be dangerous. Well, we say this every time, but this, this is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I really like it too. And uh, yeah, we, look at that. We probably shouldn't have done this. Hmm. Well. Oh my gracious. I'm gonna tell them what it's like. Hmm? 
You know what reminds me of? What? You know those peppermints you get? Oh yeah, the soft peppermint. That melt in your mouth? Mm -hmm. That's what it's like. That is exactly what it's like. Man, that's just so cool. <laughs> mm. I wonder if the soft peppermints are freeze dry. Well, I hope every one of you have a wonderful Mother's Day and I hope you enjoyed this video. So until next time, keep on freeze drying. <laughs> They're good. They're delicious.